Hey everybody, the Banga's back. Welcome to part 17 of Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom. Brought to you by GameAnyone.com. Alright, I made a minor change to my roster here. Mako no longer has Aqua Dragon. I gave him back Octoburser. I felt it'll be much more worth it in the long run once Octoburser levels up. Because I believe he gets a special attack that can target all enemies as well. Same as Enchanting Mermaid. But that's not for a while. Also, I can only take seven marshals with me, and the whole thing with Mako doesn't even matter this mission. That being said, however, it's time for us to get started with Secret Power. This mission was also very bad for level grinding because there is no enemy camp. Just a few marshals, and some of them allow you to get monsters instantly. So you just gotta free, uh, my Luno, and you don't even get your base to fall to the enemy because there is no camp. You can just send them out. Your enemies are a bunch of shaddies. That's the main one right there with Armored Zombie, Pumpkin, King of Ghosts, and Dragon Zombie. This one over here is King Yamamakai, Castle of Dark Illusions, and Reaper of the Cards. This one has Dark Elf and Cosmo Queen. Very strange because Cosmo Queen is actually a fusion of Dark Elf and Mystical Elf, yet it's a standard monster right now. And here you got two Battle Oxes and a Sengenjin. Very tough monsters. We should be able to handle them, however. It's all a matter of who we send out. I'm gonna send out Mai to take this particular base act over here. Actually, I'm just gonna do this on this mode. I'm gonna move you over here to Genova. No, not Genova from uh, Final Fantasy VII. I'll send Bakura. Over here to Charte Goalua. Blech. If my brain can't talk, Joey can go over here to Fiorente. I think I'll send Yugi to Janonva as well. I don't have to worry about my main base being attacked because these enemies don't even leave their base. In fact, when you look closely, there is no main camp. I mean, yes, my Luno is technically a main camp, but the enemies don't spawn there whenever they're defeated. So therefore, you're very limited to where you can level grind, because there are some monsters you can recruit once you take a town. Like uh, these two over here, Janonva and Fiorente, you can instantly recruit monsters just by liberating those two. Charte Goulua, bleh, does not have a monster you can recruit. And there are also some other monsters you can recruit on the main field. I sense a disturbance in your heart. Doubt will bring ruin upon you. Well, that's weird, because I don't doubt myself at all. I know I'm going to kick your ass very brutally, Shaddy. Alright, so none of these have the ability to heal. Do they have any special abilities with their attacks? No. So I think we're going to just pretty much go all out against them. So I see this being extremely easy. Hang on a second. Now, Lola, can you get off that? You're on... You're on my sister's boyfriend's pants, I believe. I just gotta put them on the chair so she doesn't get her hair all over them. And now she's looking at me like, Why you do this? I was comfortable. It's like, I understand you need to be comfortable, doggy, but you can't go beyond people's clothes. I doubt she understands that, but still, it's the principle. Now we just gotta focus on taking out these monsters now that we pretty much get another wave of attacks. Castle of Dark Illusions, I didn't even look what it did, it guarded, didn't it? Because I didn't take damage, and I see it has one less action point, so yeah, it was guarding. Luckily, I wasn't even attacking it. Since we're doing this in the daytime, these monsters don't have an advantage. Reefer of Darkness, Sierra. I know it's called Reef of Darkness, but I was just making that up to sound a little bit trendy, even though it's anything but. Alright, so let's just keep on this momentum here. Remember, these guys don't respawn, so it's not like it's going to be a long, drawn-out battle. 
If anything, it'll be quite short once we take all these bases and then we can converge on the main one. Remember, like I said before, there are plenty of monsters you can recruit, so it's actually a very good mission. Unfortunately, I mean, like I said, it's terrible for level grinding. You'd probably have to wait for the next one to get some good momentum on your monsters. You know, just build up your weaker ones, and then you can see if they're much better than your already strong ones. In some cases, the weaker monsters have really good abilities that are worth keeping along as a support guy. But since there are so many options, it's actually hard to choose what your best lineup is going to be. And there we go, we just liberated Jananva. So let's get those sweet, sweet level ups. Oh uh, yeah. And I believe if we liberate these towns, we get a spell automatically, like Final Flame. Machine King was discovered in the ruins. And he joins right away. Okay. That makes me quite happy. Trade unions are actually getting a lot more expensive, though. I'm gonna buy some Dian Keto the Cure Masters. They are quite expensive, though. But that's the joys of, like, cheating. <laughs> Those that disturb my slumber must pay the price. The price of what? I already paid a lot of money for uh, Dian Keto the Cure Master. I don't owe you anything except a beating. Alright, Singenjin can only attack twice, but it is a powerful monster. However, I'm still gonna focus on the Battle Oxes. Remember, like I said in the previous episode, that I've had people comment saying that Swordsman from a Foreign Land is actually a very good monster when you get it leveled up. So that's why I'm bringing it with me. So the more I level it up, the closer I get to unleashing its full potential. Ooh, that attack must hurt. No, not necessarily. It's pretty much on par with any other attacks I've gone through. That battle axe, is, battle ox rather, is almost defeated already. Uh, Swordsman is not going to be able to take up battle ox in this turn unless I get a crit. So I'll use this turn to fully heal it. Beast of Gilfer, however, can take it out. That's a better use of my action points. Just barely, though. What was its HP at? 239, and I did like 235 damage. Okay, good, Sengenjin can't attack anymore. Oh, that hurts. Okay, priority right now is Battle Ox. We just need to take this guy out, and we're in the clear. He's spreading out his attacks for all of our monsters, though. I don't know if that's wise, but I guess he's gonna anyway. Come on, Insetsu, give me a crit. Give me that sweet ninja power. No, yeah, looks like they're focusing on Beast of Gilfer for some reason. We're pretty much trading blows at this point. Alright, so. We got this in the bag, pretty much. We can only soften up Singenji, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to kill it. Unless I get a massive crit that can do over 2,000 damage, and that looks to be impossible. In fact, I did zero damage. Couldn't even let me do at least 300 there, seriously. Wow, I gained like three level ups on Swordsman from a foreign land. That's great. And you got an extra action point from that as well. That makes me happy. Okay, uh, Cycloptic Smurf on steroids, you're gonna die. Albeit very slowly. Does he actually have red hair? Or is that a towel? It looks like he actually has red hair. He can kind 
kind of reminds me of like Animal from the Muppets. Oh my god. That is nuts. The things you notice when you actually just pay attention to stuff. It's crazy sometimes. Alright, let's take a couple more hits and this guy's down. The sooner the better. Okay, good. My monster's still alive. But barely, only double digit HP. And that's all there was to it. Okay, there we go. I was wondering if anybody else is going to gain a level. And there you go. So now we got Charte Goalua. We get 1200 gold and a gravity bind for that. Let me go shopping. Eh, multiplies. I actually heard you can stack those to make Karibo's attack power even better. Yeah, I noticed it just boosts attack power normally. I believe when I looked online, it said it was by a thousand. Which is quite insane, by the way. Alright, I'm gonna send Yugi's team out over here. I believe there is, like, a wall monster you can find between Jinanva and a uh, Fiorenta. And another wall monster pack around here. Between Fiorenta and Mailuno. I'm gonna struggle a lot saying these words because they're just random letters mashed together. Okay, we got like three or four consonants, so we gotta put a vowel somewhere. Let's try the most inconvenient vowel, okay? I don't know if it's exactly between, like, go a straight line, or it just could be, like, anywhere on the beaten path. I guess we'll find out. Come on, either Yugi or Joey gotta reach him. Okay, we're not gonna run to a roaming monsters, we're just gonna head here? Okay. I must test the power of the one that attempts to break the seal. Oh, I'm gonna break a seal on your face with total destruction. Yeah, you're really gonna like that. Okay, so we got ourselves a little problem here. The Cosmo Queen has status guard, meaning it cannot be inflicted with status ailments at all. It also has super stamina, which allows it to replenish HP each turn. So, we got ourselves a very tough opponent here, but I still need to focus on... I think we should just focus on, uh, the Cosmo Queen first. It's gonna be the greater threat. You know, you know what? I actually think a rare pack of monsters is between Fire Rente and Charte Gualua, not Jananva. I don't know why I was thinking that. That was a bit of a mistake on my part. No wonder I couldn't find it. I was actually in between the wrong villages. Okay, so remember, focus on Cosmo Queen, because that one can do the most damage. Kind of looks like Queen Amidala from Star Wars Episode One. Yep, it just gained HP instantly. It does that at the start of its turn. Its attack is called Shadow Master, which reminds me of Double Dragon so much. Ooh, that was over 350 damage to the Dark Magician, for crying out loud. But I say we pretty much got this monster on the ropes. If I can get a crit, come on, give me a crit, give me a crit. Of course you can't. That Dark Elf just guarded. Goodbye. There, that's the toughest monster down. These two Dark Elves should not be a problem. Might be a problem for Dark Magician. Ugh! That was a crit. Okay. Unfortunately, Dark Magician Girl doesn't have any potions or medicines. 
I guard it? That was a wasted opportunity. You had a good chance to wipe out my Dark Magician. Why didn't you take it? I guess they would just care more about longevity than offense. Gotta get your priorities in check. I say we're gonna liberate this area in no time as well. It's just a matter of doing enough damage. I'd say once we complete this mission, we're gonna have like a nice set of options on what monsters we're gonna be using. Remember, we just recruited a Machine King for winning this battle. And that's actually a very good monster. I might consider using on Esperoba's team. As for other monsters you can get here, I'll we'll have to look into that once we actually get done here. Oh, that was a good time to crit Summon Skull. Nicely done. I need to return to this village to get the win here. Unless I get a crit. Okay, maybe I should start investing in lottery tickets from now on. Because that was actually very well timed. That makes me so happy. Alright, let's speed things up. And we get Mirror Force for that. And we get Beta the Magnet Warrior instantly. Okay, I'm gonna have to set up a trade union real badly. Uh, Dark Energies, I'll buy one. But that's all I'm gonna get. Okay, who do I have here? Oh, I got Mai in there. Alright, I'm gonna send Mai in between these two villages. And who do I have over here? It's Bakura, right? Yeah, he's a little worse for wear, so I'm just gonna leave him there. So I'll send Mai to look for roaming monsters to the south. And I'll send Yugi to look for these roaming monsters around here. I'm gonna leave Joey there in the town. I don't think I'm gonna use him to fight. Maybe I gotta go east for this? Or do I have to go west? I guess we'll try a little process of elimination here. Actually, I can send Joey over this way. So that he can look for the monsters on this side. You can look for the monsters over here. And I'd say everybody be happy. Except the ones we beat up. But they don't have feelings, they just have code. Labyrinth tank was discovered in some small ruins in the forest. Oh, we got Labyrinth tank, alright. Was it on my side or did Joey find it? I don't know. Or maybe Yugi found it. I'm kinda confused. Oh, oh boy. Come on, Yugi, get, get your movement on. Up, oh, Dragon Piper got discovered. And we got that monster instantly. Wow! Alright. I think we can just go straight on to Maluno. I'm pretty sure Yugi can handle it. Can he? You know what? I'm gonna send Shyman on anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna let him get the first attack, and then Yugi can pick up the rest. So I'll just camp you right here, because I'm worried about Shaiman's, uh, I mean Shadi's armored zombie. It has the ability to, well, paralyze you, but I think that only works at night. So be very careful for that. In the grand scheme of things, the best time to attack him is during the day. So I might have to do that right now, actually. Otherwise, I may not get a good chance like this again. Actually, there is another monster you can recruit, but you just gotta finish the mission. So let's do that. There is a great power attempting to come into this world. It is time for me to face my final task. 
which is us. Alright, let's do this. Okay, this fight could actually be pretty tough. Armored Zombie has seven action points. Okay, so apparently that ability can still work even in day. Yeah, it can paralyze you. So, if anything, take that monster out right away. That's the only one that can do a nice heavy bit of heavy damage to us by virtue of paralysis. That's why I was very hesitant to send Yugi out right away. But when I looked at the uh, attack and I saw that it was voice, I was thinking, oh, it's okay, maybe it only works at night. And then when you go into a battle, that's when you can actually see it. Oh, dear God, I got two monsters paralyzed. Never mind. This could actually be pretty bad. Oh, that crit was very lucky. The other two monsters don't have special effects on their attacks. Now we just gotta wait for that paralysis to wear off. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for that dragon zombie next. It's got 1999, the day of lava, it's HP. Yeah, we're all right. We don't need to worry about healing. Dark Magician Girl is still paralyzed? What the hell? Get over it already. I need you to get it back together. Oh, we're a team. Can't have you getting all numb on me. That's Dark Magician got over it right away. It doesn't even look like that is coming from his mouth. I don't know if he's queefing that. If you don't know what queef is, you'll have to look that up under your own discretion. Preferably with safe search on. I don't want to go into any details about that if you don't know. Oh, the process wore off. It's perfectly timed. Alrighty then, we got this battle in the bag. We got enough action points to wipe this guy out, unless we're missing all the time. Which is likely not going to happen across three monsters. Because none of us are blind. And goodbye. The Great Pumpkin is not so great anymore. Alright, got some level ups. Yugi didn't get any extra martial points, but I'm okay with that. And we got Bless of Moonlight instantly. Great. Millennium Golem joins us, even though I could, couldn't care less about him. Alright, so we get the Black Luster Ritual, just for beating this mission. We get a Regeki spell of our own, and a Ryoku. Ryoku is actually a very good item. You cannot even buy these. Face off. Is that that John Travolta movie? Anyways. Hoping to surround the capital Sigvarts, Yugi attacks the eastern forges of Nanbur Castle. The majestic Nanbur Castle overlooks a lake and used to be the seat of the Imperial family. But it was abandoned in the confusion as the Empire started to fall. As Yugi's forces approached Nanbur Castle, he found something he had not expected. The imposing castle was being guarded by none other than the master of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yugi's grandpa? Well, he had a Blue Eyes White Dragon, then he lost it, and then Kaiba ripped it up. Could've had four, man, even though you were only allowed three in the deck. So I don't know why they were complaining about Kaiba for ripping up a Blue Eyes if he can allow it to use three anyway. Alright, so this Black Luster Ritual works for one of two monsters. And we happen to have one of them right now. The Dark Magician. So, we'll go to it right now. This will allow me to change my Dark Magician into the Magician of Black Chaos. Yeah, it works for one of these two monsters. Dark Magician and Gaia the Fierce Knight. Gaia the Fierce Knight we can actually find in this mission. There, so now my Dark Magician is the Magician of Black Chaos. Oh, yes. This is gonna be great. 
Book of Secret Arts. Uh, do I want to give you a deal of Phantom? I might as well. And probably a Monster Reborn. Actually, I think we're going to go with Dianketo the Cure Master for this. It doesn't have any abilities, but it retains its level, which I'm very happy about. Wait a minute, Dark Lightning has an ability now? Oh, I wish I could check it. Uh, maybe I can, like, once we get into battle. I might just do damage against machines. Who knows? Either way, Summon Skull just got better for me. Alright, so, I think I'm gonna stop this episode right here. I do. Let me make some changes to Karibo over here. I don't think I'll be needing that deal of Phantom anymore, so I'm just gonna give him another Multiply. I should have another one. Do I? Yes. I got exactly two. Okay, I think that's going to be enough now for this episode, so stay tuned for that when we take on Kaiba. See you everybody, thanks for watching.